the full story behind anti brother Itachi, why he is full of shit, why he is irredeemable, but everything that you can think of, why you think I have to be a devil's advocate. Some people actually think that I should look at this in a different way when you can't look at it any other way. Oh, he gave you laughs. Oh, he gave you this and that. He didn't give me life. He didn't give me anything that was necessary for me to survive. Everything that I wanted to know, that I had ambition to learn, is shit that he kept away from me and shit that I learned on my own. Oh, I'm sorry that Dragon Ball Z fights look just like gang member fights. And I'm making you think this shit isn't real because people are making fun of you for the guy that thought he can go Super Saiyan, yet you end up pulling the bad Asian bitch in junior high. He kept on trying to tell me a socialize when I was younger. You're gonna regret when you get older. You're gonna see everything I told you come to life. Mom is gonna be right. All these kids were socializing when they're young. That's why you can't fit in with the people listening to hip hop. You weren't listening to hip hop. You know what you were doing? You were listening to four kids fucking One Piece. I'm sitting over here trying to get you to expand your mind when you get to live out your adrenaline without thinking. That's the life I wanna fucking live. Instead of being forced to think analytical, you get to go with your original thought. Nobody questions you. Everybody questions the fuck out of me. Oh, we don't need to question him. He plays basketball. Just because I don't do something generic does not mean I'm a fucking retard. It's how society treated me. Oh, you don't play basketball. You're retarded. Oh, you don't watch wrestling. You're retarded. All the fucking fake manly shit that's literally there for Lunchables is his foundation. But everybody looks at him as his grown man shit. That's not fucking Lunchables. He's talking about politics. He's talking about gang wars. Little do you know gang members know a lot about politics. Ha 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 ha. I have lived an epic life to where I've seen shit that was equivalent to anime in terms of storytelling, in terms of everything. That's why I was so surprised when I finally figured out about people. I'm like, dude, people really are not what I thought they were. I thought they were completely boring. I didn't give a fuck about people until I was in middle school. But... That was the problem. He was very people oriented for the wrong reason. He thought it was for the right reason. So here's the thing. One thing you have to know about this his character. One thing you have to know about anti-brother Itachi is the whole reason why everybody supported him was because he played sports when he was younger. He got to know everyone in the neighborhood when he was younger. Nobody that I've seen with the social interaction disagree with him. But little did I know, when I got older, everything that he was telling me He's a fucking square. He does everything that the gangster does except get women. And he thinks women are dumb. He thinks women are this and that. And there was this one time when me, Justin, and Andre went ding dong ditching. And I made a video about this. And Andre said something smart. And I said something even smarter. And I'm going to make a video for that for another day. And my brother actually didn't agree with them. And he's like, those are retarded ass white boys being technical. I'm like, technical is how paper works. The situation. First and foremost, he had funk on my uncle Jiraiya. So, here's another Prince reveal. So, Uncle Jiraiya, I call him Uncle Jiraiya figuratively because that's the role he played in my life. That when I was growing up, he taught me a whole lot more than my brother did. My brother let me stay in my room when my uncle Jiraiya introduced me to Tyler Perry. He introduced me to the funniness. Of, he introduced me to all that shit. And literally, my brother is all like, you're full of shit. He looks at my uncle who's like, you're trying to teach him the wrong thing. And my uncle looks at him like, well, you're not trying to teach him anything at all. So he knows that when I get into grade school, that Tyler Perry is full of shit. Because what the fuck is talking about deadbeat daddies when everybody in school is grilling bitches? Tyler Perry doesn't exist in middle school. Anti-brother Itachi has the mind of a hardhead thug, yet he claims to be civilized. He does Riley shit, but whenever you try to correct him, all of a sudden he becomes Huey. He gives you an emotional speech to be civilized after he pisses you off. He's just like a white person. And I didn't realize that until I was older. Is that all that thug shit was only coming from the perspective of somebody who knew he was going to win, not somebody who actually put himself to the test. Somebody who had a break it 
or leave it at you. He's been in the many fights after many fights. He got plenty of street cred, but that's all in his fucking head because where's the guy get regional? Where's the guy get outside your comfort zone? Where's the guy get this and that? But me, looking at him when I'm young, I'm thinking that he is the toughest guy ever. He's so multidimensional. He's this and that. He watches anime and he plays basketball. He can do everything better than me. I have to look up to him. And that's why he never made me jealous. I never saw him with no fucking lady, but I saw him a shipload of multidimensionality. I see him do a whole bunch of shit, like watch a whole bunch of shows on Netflix that I would never watch. He was at a time where a specific style of gangster was on the rise, and that specific style of gangster was flawed. There were evolutions of gangers that were really better than his method. And he follows the current generation that doesn't stand a candle to the OG Ice Cube Snoop Dogg generation, which is Garaya's generation of gangster. The whole time, this guy is fucking up, but he has this mentality, my brother is a special ed, he's never gonna figure out what the fuck I did to him when he's younger, he's never gonna figure out what the fuck it really is, he has no idea that this is controlled by gangs, he has no idea this and that, so I'm gonna fill his head with a whole bunch of no to believe it shit. Because I don't want him to go the same route that I do. Knowing that we have the same DNA. Knowing that we all have hormones. Knowing that we're all going to do the same thing. He had no discipline. Me, I was forced to have discipline because they knew that he had bad grades in school. But I'm a special ed. It doesn't matter if the regular ed guy has bad grades. He's still a thousand times more dimensional than a special ed kid. So how much is literally having a good heart when you have to face the reality of the situation? You have to to literally stand up to evil people you have to surpass them you have to show them that even though you have more tools than me i'm not gonna back down and it happened over and over again of course a random person is gonna believe my older brother literally dissing me oh you thought you can go super sin on your younger you're just still my little brother the whole time acting like i never fucking improve the reason why i'm so foul for this video is not because I want to diss him because so many people replicate what he failed to realize and that's why they always fucking fail. They sound confident, they sound at home and the reason why he does this specific style with his voice that makes everybody fall in love with him like that Sakuraki Hanamichi shit is because he spent a lot of years alone. That style comes from being street smart in public school, thinking that all public school people are stupid and thinking that you don't know what the streets have to hold i'm like okay you try being homeless for the year i know what you're saying is completely total bullshit you're saying that niggas are dumb where really niggas are smarting you all those black people are full of shit all those people with dreads are full of shit all that stereotypical nigga 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 shit you are thinking just like them it's that you're not willing to take the consequence you're not willing to go down for the count you are a pussy in actuality but you're not a pussy when you back someone in the corner I'm saving that for a little bit later on in the video, but that style of him keeping you at home, all that shit with the Prince of Tennis, him showing me all this dang anime, him being the originator is not a reason for me to respect him because I did more than the tools that he gave me. Everything that he gave me I already surpassed, so I could have lived without it. Yeah, he gave me something different, but was it necessary? He this is all niggas, he thinks niggas are dumb, but he is literally one of the most cowardly niggas I have ever seen in my life. Because when it came down to the point where, okay, Eris has surpassed his limits, he's proven that he can get a girl, he's proven that he can get anything. He looks at my current standing in society, he's like, he's still just my little brother. And that's why he turned gay, because he used that style of Sakuragi Hanamichi. There was this guy at my house who literally did the same exact shit that he was doing, literally, and it went over his head because he told my friend about the time where I poured cereal into the PS1, and literally, he was all like, Eris fucked up my buster move. And this guy for season two literally said, you thought I was a bowler? He did the exact same thing as him, and he was my age, and that has to tell your life. You'll look at that situation, that is why he stayed at a junior high school level when he was supposed to advance. And that's only going to work against somebody who's a special ed, not versus somebody who's lived a full life especially. He used to always...
fucking say that my uncle was dumb, that this and that, and you know what? I'm not defending either of them, but at least, literally, my uncle went farther into the street life, so he has more of a right to say that being a nice person is better. And he's sitting over here telling me, acting just like the kids of regular school, and then he's telling me to combat the kids of regular school, and that corner shit, when he backed me into a corner at night, is when he's trying to tell me that adapt to hip hop. He would wait to shit overflow, I'm like, well, you're sitting over here telling him about how you should've hug out with you and your other brothers when you were younger, yet you don't do shit about it. He's not gonna listen, he's just gonna be obsessed for his anime. Well, I bet if you shove some pussy in his face, he would forget about anime. So going off the two supporting factors, he thinks that black guys with dreads are stupid and that girls in middle school and high school and girls around the world are just thoughts and they're hella dumb and lily. He has the mindset that I had after the hyperbolic time chamber that women aren't entertaining that guys are this and that to a point where he's gonna end up fucking a dude. You can't expect that out of a woman. That's not her role she plays. And he's expecting that because he didn't actually fucking try. He was too content with his Sakuragi Hazabichi. To reflect on those two viewpoints before I get into that actual backstory of why you have to know he is full of shit before I continue this video is why when me, Justin, and Andre got caught ding dong ditching, yeah, he said that I had good comeback, but he made the girl look like shit. He's like, you know what that girl was doing when I was in junior high? She was going around asking people for a blowjob. She was saying, how much would you like for a blowjob? How much would you like for a blowjob? And literally, he told me that, and that is his view of girls throughout his whole life. I've seen these slutty girls, they ain't shit. So when you're suicidal cutting yourself over these dumbasses, oh, it's not like I don't want to fuck them. That already backfired on him. And the second point that he thinks that all stereotypical black guys with them, the why was Robert so nice to me? Why was Rod so nice to me? How come they didn't force me into criminal activity? How come they gave me a whole bunch of perspective? How come they actually helped me out when it came to real street smarts? He's right, Ross, and he thinks that he's more than what he is. And literally, there was this one move that I was watching when he was in his own little world dancing where he used his elbow as a gun. Literally, and when I was young, I'm like, dude, that's super creative, that's super spontaneous. But after I got to know Raj, I'm like, he's imitating what the fuck Raj is. Raj is who my brother pretends to be. No matter how good you sound, when you say that Sakuragi had Michi shit, you are from the suburbs. So you thinking that you're super street smart, thinking that you have all the soul. Going to this public school, then why was I the one? Who was known for dancing? If you have all that soul, if you know what you're talking about, if you're so social, then how come I prevailed? So let's go on to the beginning of anti brother Atachi. So there was this one day where me and him had a conversation about why I have to adapt to people, why I can't stay in my own little world anymore. I used to be one of those kids that used to repeat what the fuck the Cartoon Network schedule was in person. Literally, you can call that mental, you can call that whatever, but Cartoon Network was the motherfucking shit. And literally, I stayed in my house and he had this ego complex. So here's this thing. His fucking mindset where it came to everything was savage. So there was these two shows. There was Tarzan and then there was Stanley. Now Stanley was about a kid and his goldfish that literally had the best time together and they would do anything for each other. And there was this time where Stanley's fish got sold and he made a musical number for Stanley, begging Stanley's back. It was just like Gary Go Home, but it was Stanley and his goldfish. And I love that episode. And he used to always walk me to school and Lily, that's the deal. But he would always watch Tarzan. They made Tarzan into a show and my brother was loving that. So everybody looked at my brother, even to this day as a fucking brute. And Lily, they're all like, he's all like, I told you not to watch that goddamn Stanley. On to the comedy segment. This was so fucking funny, so he tried to tell me not to be a white boy, so he would make up literally lies in order for me to act black, so there was this one time where I called him dude, and he's like, bruh, don't call me dude, and I'm all like, why, what's wrong with dude, he's like, a dude is a whale's penis, there was this one time where I got a fucked up haircut at the Asian barbershop, and he's all like, you can't get a haircut from them? 
They can't see through a straight line. There was this one time where we got Tekaichi 1 and he would always play as fucking Chiaotzu. And he would school me, he would be hella fucking fast, spinning on his head and shit. I'm all like, what the fuck is this? He's like, ha ha! You would have never thought to use Chiaotzu. Chiaotzu is a motherfucking beast. So we all know the embarrassing thing that happened with me, Gogeta, and her girl. So the great thing about this is when Tekaichi 2 came out, I show him why I am the true Dragon Ball Z fan. So here's what happens is we first get Tekaichi 2. And Tekaichi 1, he was so dominant. We were playing the tournament stage and it was Gildo versus Trunks and he beat me. He's so like, no. He's, I'm like, you're a Trunks. That was too easy. And so we literally, we switched the characters and he still beats me. Literally. So when Tekaichi 2 comes out, I keep a straight face. I'm called Coin Collect. And so the first two people we pick before we enter the story mode. He picks Namek vs. Gohan, and I pick Krillin, and I beat him, not fairly easily, but literally, Concord Collective was literally me envisioning me being him, and I beat him with Krillin, and he's like, what? And then when Tekai Ichi 3 came out, it was crazy because he's like, oh, they have GT Goku, motherfucking future Gohan, come on, they got future Gohan? So it comes down to it, and he picks GT Goku, and I pick Oob, and literally we last all three rounds, so he throws the spirit bomb, and I hit him with the Kamehameha, and I beat him, he was literally the best anime older brother, and literally, when Storm 1 first came out, I was losing to that computer over and over again, because I would play the computer on the same before they had online play, so he would look at me, he's like, you lost more than you won, and he's like, you know what? It's good that you think that it's good that you understand that you have to lose to win. And so literally he tried feed me himself and he picked Shido and shit looking like a nigga. And I defeat him literally over and over again. Literally, I'm like, you wanna run it back? He's like, you are not beating me three times for I am Shino. <laughs> <laughs> And so there was this one time where I caught him playing on his own. He's like, I just had a nice, intense match for Orochimaru versus Guy. Literally, when Naruto Shippuden came out and Sasuke finally kills Itachi, he looks at me. He's like, that's what happened if you were killed me. I'm literally texting him freshman year while I'm on Merita. I'm like, Sasuke got a girlfriend. He's like, what? I gotta go watch that shit. So imagine all that relatability just for at the end to realize that he was trying to make you gay, and he was trying to keep you in your comfort zone because I have more drive than he ever did. Literally, when I was trained to be Gio, he literally he looks at me with the frowniest face in his eye, and he's like, "Move your body more. You're stupid stuff like that." He used to always criticize me about you're in your own little world. This isn't how it's gonna work. Nobody is gonna let you take control of the situation. This and that. Literally, you don't have a brain. Literally. Everything that you do is irresponsive, Lily. That was his mindset with me. I'm like, well, that's why I fight back. I'm willing to learn, even though you say I don't know shit. And you think you know everything is going to be your biggest downfall. There was this time where mom was making spaghetti, Lily. So, she Lily told me to bring up some spaghetti. She's like, Eris, come bring me up some spaghetti. So, Lily, so this is eighth grade year where everybody knows I'm heavy on One Piece. I'm heavy on Eminem. I'm heavy on everything. And so I start singing to myself, my palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on the sweater already. And so my brother points to their plate. I'm like, what? And literally, I, I would say anything, he's still pointing to their plate. And I'm like, what? And I look at the plate and he's like, Mom spaghetti. But to be real, that's why I won. Because I watched something that was actually caring about a person and he watched something that was based off proof strength. And damn near popularity he used to have the biggest of the biggest friends come over and he gave me the speech before I got into high school so he had two big white guys as a friend and one's name was Gom and another name was country country was hella fucking big and literally so my brother was a top contender he went back down from a fight to somebody his age and shit and literally, I was known as the guy who was uncoordinated. Oh, the guy that just came off of Dragon Ball Z trying to fit in the school. Are we been adapting to hip-hop, bro? Literally, that's where they came at me. When he was always hip-hop and he was always for everything. Oh, 
I didn't know that Usher wasn't dead, so I thought he was just a singer because I only heard him on the radio. He's like, where have you been? But guess what happened my freshman year when I got into high school? Big ass country, big ass God, me, big ass Telly, big ass Robert, big ass Joey, big ass Dale. I was evenly bashed for everyone except for Robert. Robert knew how to balance, but if he was white, I would have got him. Telly was a little bit whitewashed, so I kind of have the advantage there, but yeah. Big ass Oscar, literally bitching 200 pounds. I'm literally 120 in high school going toe to toe with these big guys, literally dodging all their hooks and shit. That is the premise of this video because I've already adapted to everything that he showed me back when I was in high school and there was nothing that he could tell me no more until I reached the other side of the field where I truly, truly took more of a risk than him is the only reason why I learned why he can never be right. I was already better than him in my life, I was already better than him at getting bitches back at the time trailer, but I wasn't better than him on paper. In order for me to get everything undeniable, I had to go to the other side of the field, dip my feet in the water, and then tap out in order to realize why he is foolish, foolish shit. There was still room for the devil to talk shit at the hyperbolic time trailer because all this shit he was saying was coming true because literally, I look at a lot of people that he knows that are able to make beats at the age of five and that literally me saying at home when I'm young is literally wasting years of my life now that I realize what life has to offer I see little Asian girls being able to skateboard at like ages of three and four and stuff ice skating literally so I get what he's saying but that's all for the wrong purpose I don't come for that type of family I don't come for those type of resources that all has to do with family and literally location and this and that and literally he tries to say that I'm in the same boat as white people because I'm in the suburbs I'm blessed I should try to chase the high lifestyle was that's all he did my older brother went to fucking night school and he's trying to lecture me so here's what happened so scratch all that other shit there was this time where literally this is literally the highest moment I think anybody can give him like if you ask me the most irreplaceable factor was when I was watching Kogias, so I got into Kogias due to the opening. Now, everybody says that Colors is the best opening, like, no, it's Kaiju no Photo. So, every Saturday, we had this thing where we'd make tear tots in the oven, we'd make personal pizzas, and we would get prepared for Tsunami. And so, literally, so Kogias comes on, and I start singing the theme song and shit, and literally, so at the end, it's all over. And so, literally, I start hearing those high notes. Don't come down, don't come down. And so, literally, he's like, you drove me all the way over here, having to make snacks and shit, just to listen to the fucking music. No, but seriously, his relatability was top tier. So, I could not literally argue with him at the time. So, there was this one time where I'm watching South Park with my friend. It's Randy versus Cartman. And he literally makes this quote. The elementary school fights were brutal. Because he was hanging around another gang member when he was in elementary and shit. Literally doing all this crazy shit. I'm sitting over here looking at him with the big guns with Lily. The six pack. I'm all like, that is we shit because he has no drive. Now that I'm older today. I feel like every single good point that I looked up to him for when I was younger it has to be depicted because the end result was devastating to a point where you can't just cover it up for a couple of laughs. All this pain and fucking torment. Oh, I tried to tell you when I was younger. No, you didn't. You didn't actually try. You said it once and you didn't back it up for shit. And then you wait to the end result like I told you. So you got over there still having fun instead of actually push the importance of the situation to me. And then I realized it was for the better because he was following the wrong path anyway. He looked up to the wrong people. He did a whole lot of the same shit. So a lot of people say that, yo, I was too hard on him. You're uncivilized. You're autistic. That's why shit got out of hand. I'm like, okay, if I was autistic, I should have never, ever been able to be in their fight or even come close. Because I put it like this. I used to beat myself up because I hear stories about like how autistic people, like, get stronger than their older brothers due to their angry due to this and that and that literally my brother has to suffer having an autistic brother that beats the fuck out of him because his autistic brother doesn't don't want to chill doesn't want to analyze the situation doesn't want to do this and that he just wants to literally live in his own world and blur up and so my brother literally can't fight back because literally he told me this excuse he's like well your face is gonna get used to getting hit after a while so I can see where you're coming from and so I tried to fight him again and then he restrains me 
trying to be like what our older brother is so I have the view oh he's able to restrain me every time but what happens when I get older when my arms get out of his length from restraint he would put my arm in the position I swung at him and he put my arm behind my back and delved me to the ground and I tried to juke my way out of his arms like I would break my arm in order to get the fight over he's like dude you're being irrational I'm like no I'm being 100% rational this is why I get girls and you don't because I'd rather die than live a punk literally he does not care and literally that scared the fuck out of him I'm like you're not a real gangster you're not willing to risk it all I came that way because you pushed the corner where it physical pain no longer exists because you keep on trying to beat me up mentally I'm gonna eventually gotta look for those actions he was adjusting that was literally for my personal life it's all good when I'm a kid now but what happens when I grow up but the worst part about it is he was an older brother on paper but he was never an older brother in real life an older brother telling you to calm down for a situation trying to get you to be at local oh you're over your head that's exactly what justice says done right on paper but he was forgetting that he was in the same mindset as me literally he had a group mindset just like me but he had results and i had no results so he's literally looking at me like sasuke looking at naruto like you don't know what true fucking pain is i'm like oh really and so we get on to the incident where he backs me in the corner, trying to figure out who the fuck I am. So, my brother introduces me to Air Master. And Air Master was a sick-ass anime that I looked at. And he showed me the craziness. So, I literally talked to my brother for real. He showed me what stream it was. Like. He showed me what this and that. And literally, Air Master went like this. He literally showed me the dynamic and literally how there was a fan of the Air Master who was a girl. That was a lesbian. I'm like, this show is way too dope. This show is this and that. And literally, there was something about that. That show was undeniably cold. And when I think about this day is when he was watching Air Master. So here's the thing. So I walk into the room and he starts criticizing me about why are people getting at you in school? Why are she doing this and that? And so literally, so I tell him everything. And literally, so I tell him, he's like, why are you insecure? I'm like, what? I'm sitting over here getting dominated in every social interaction. You're asking me why am I insecure? So his mindset is like, you're just following a whole bunch of white boys who think they know what they're talking about and they're not. I'm used to hanging out with country. I'm hanging out with white boys who are actually doing work. You're hanging out with white boys who are spoiled and this and that. So that's his mindset. I'm like, it doesn't matter. They're still white. They still have the advantage. And you're acting like me. Literally ignoring them is going to take away their advantage. It's going to take away my pain. It's going to take away everything that they're doing to me just by saying you're smarter than them the smart person doesn't always win sometimes the person who's the most relatable will win and so i'm trying to tell him like this it's all like he's like why you think you're retarded and i'm all like well when somebody calls me retarded i think about all the retarded shit that i used to do like you think i can go super saiyan and shit and i'm like oh that makes sense i really am retarded and he's like that's a retarded way of thinking you see how he said that in such a lower of a rhythm? You see how he said that with the utmost confidence, even though it makes no sense at all? This is what my generation fails to realize, because this year I felt the most like him. I started saying shit in the exact same rhythm. I'm like, this happens when you're in solitude for a long time, when you have nothing but memories to fall back on, is what that style is used for. And then he goes like this, he's like, when someone calls you a card, you think about all the genius shit you made. Think about your comic book. Think about all the fucking a and I'm all like, that's the main fucking reason why they're clowning on me. Because I can't do anything fucking else. And I keep on trying to explain myself over and over again. He gives excuse after excuse after excuse. And I'm all like, fuck. And he's like, I'm just trying to talk to you. And I'm all like, get the fuck out. And so literally, he's like, you're not a rational thinker. I want to... Swing randomly with me, buddy. I don't think you want to do this and that. Literally, is what he tried to tell me. is like, you know, I'm going to win the fight if that's out. So you might as well be reasonable. So I stood up and he pins me down. I stood up and he pins me down. And he's like, if you keep on doing that, you're going to see another side of me. And I stand up instantly. And he pins me down again. And he's like, well, I'm not going to give you what you want and beat your butt. I'm trying to get you to realize that you're trying to be a brute when you don't have the tools to be the brute. I'm backed up by gang member activity and you're not backed up by anyone. It didn't fucking matter. I still fought him after that and after that again and after that to a point where he started taking the hits. 
And that's what made him full of shit ever, brother. I'm not gonna put up with that shit forever, no matter how logical things are. That is why you don't get a woman. It has been stated over and over again. That's the beginning stake when you're trying to meet a woman. Oh, what does woman have to do with fighting? That's why you don't get a woman. Okay, so anyway, that's why all your friends were gone and you're stuck with that style. That style was meant for you to complete a process that you didn't complete. You decided to stay in public school when they decided to rape. You're nowhere near a fucking gangster. You're trying to tell me that they're dumb? If they're dumb, then why are they fucking dominating? So on to the point I'm trying to make about why that's why he doesn't get women is because a lot of women work emotionally instead of logically. So when you try to talk to your girl, you're not going to try to say, oh, I work at Stanford or I work at this and that. You should try to talk to him about the most recent show that was on TV that everybody likes for starters, literally get them engaged emotionally instead of logically because they're going to get bored. I have a teacher for that, bro. I have parents for that, bro. Sorry, that's how girls think. And it, every fucking day, I sound just like him. I'm starting to get more and more like him. I'm like this and that. And then literally, a voice popped in my head. You see? This is why he was ahead the whole time. This is the beginning of the year, baby. Why I thought there was still room to say, oh, I didn't socialize when I was younger. That's why he gets more results. And literally, that may be true to a certain extent. But mine was nowhere near detrimental. Here's where he literally got wrong. He got so obsessed with socializing to the point where it was detrimental for him. Because now all he has is connections and he doesn't have a foundation for himself. The basketball player versus the anime nerd. I'm original with everything I do with anime, but society can always blame it on my damn cartoon obsession. Yeah, but look at the formal shell in high school now he's living a stereotypical life where he can only get a fat girl and even she gets bored because he has to deal with hypergamy I thought he had an angle it wasn't a big enough angle to make a difference in my life because I made a living without him but I realized that even that angle was detrimental to himself because he got obsessed with those people ah the knife life yada all that stupid ass slang is for people that are bored that are making more situation what it is. But the past of the crumpets. Can you not talk to me? I'm taking all due to my ass. And then when he made the verse in times two, it really fucking flipped me out. Literally, oh, so this is my old brother. No, 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 no. He is desperate and literally, it may seem like the older, older brother on the outside, he knows what to say when people come over, but he doesn't know what to say when they stay. That's why I got into an emotional outburst. I got into a fight with one of my family members when Peter was at the house. I'm like, if you were the older brother, that should have never have happened. Peter saw me flip at the fucking house. And so Peter thinks he has his anger problems. This is at the same view where Peter's talking shit to me about how I don't know how I fight, how his dad taught him everything, and how I'm too emotional. When I finally flipped on somebody, he took it back and he gave me a hug instantly. He started being scared. He thought that he had anger problems. He's the one who got kicked out of school for anger when he saw me flip out. I'm the one with true anger. I'm the one who was put in a position where I had to listen to people talk shit and I couldn't do shit about it. He was the exact opposite. He got to grow up with his adrenaline being pushed out. Him, nobody could tell him fucking wrong because he always had something to fall back on. I fucking didn't. When I was proven wrong, I was forced to be disciplined. He never had to deal with discipline. He's trying to lecture me because nothing is going my way. There were so many tools that he could have told me when I was younger that could have helped me in public school without getting into criminal activity. And he just said, fuck it. If you think anime is real by now, when you get into middle school, there's nothing I can tell you. Bull the fuck shit. There are people way worse than me. People talking about people who aren't even there. Imagining their friends in real life still being there when they're not. And literally, I already grew out of that shit. And you still want to treat me the same no matter how many rappers. So here's how he views rappers and here's why he's fucked up. And here's what everything, when I started networking with the Bay Area, when I started getting connections on top of connections, when I started making the name for myself, he looked at it as me networking with dumb people that he thought that they were all just like Robert and that they don't know how to do shit professionally. They are hella fucking dumb. Oh, this and that. No, they see right through you. They know you're a fruitcake. Oh, those niggas who forgot to pay me back because he used to be your ad too. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the one with the true freaking six pack everything now because I forced myself into that lifestyle. So when I'm having all this development in eighth grade 
and literally I'm still stuck with that same person when I get out of high school literally I see the flaw in him immediately the same shit the same style that he was telling me with the Hannah Michi I actually got out a woman I'm like I'm the woman who have the same personality that you have literally I sent this dick pic to one bitch and she's all like why are you sending nudes for free though and so I'm like it's all they see and she's like dealt with you <laughs> You need to understand that that person is incredibly lonely, incredibly foolish, incredibly fooling himself, literally. His memories of being a crippled shinobi, the exact opposite I was. He was always a cruel shinobi, but that's why he never rose above. He never became regional because he was equivalent. They literally gave it to him straight. I'm like, you think the people who I network with are fucking monkeys? That's why... They always pay homage to me and they forgot to pay you. Because you're the same race as me and you're treating me like a spoiled fucking white kid. Well, it's way better to treat people the way you want to be treated. No matter what, you really think that you trying to prove dominance to people 24 7 is appealing? That is why that fake gangster shit never works. It only works for pussies who don't fight back. Or for people who fight people who they know they can beat. They run away from a fight that they know they're gonna lose. And I'm not. And that's why when he backed me in the corner, I went all out. There's no being rational when somebody's literally tried to make you their bitch. No being rational. And I was foolish enough to think that he was just talking to me. Literally, oh, he's literally, he's the one come cool and collect. I'm the one acting out. He must be right. No, that's a fucking Pee Wee Herman there, grown man's body. Whenever I look at Batman Beyond, I literally think about my brother. Literally, that's how badass he was when I was growing up. That's how I viewed him. Literally, that dark tone. Everything he did, literally messed it up. There was literally this time where I was playing Takaichi with him. And literally, there was the random slot. And I actually ended up with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. And he was Hercule. And he actually won. And I was so fucking pissed for every, literally. And I was thinking that it was literally just me and my autism. But then I figured out now that I'm older. Now that I replay that scene in my head, I'm like, he only won because he kept on spamming that damn bomb move. Every single time I went for an attack, he was spam bomb move, literally. He spammed the bomb move over and over again. He literally did that shit eight times in the match. And I'm wondering why he won. And I'm sitting over here, the Dragon Ball Z geek fanatic. And he won by spamming, but I literally think that I lost to the weakest character in the game where I'm literally the strongest. And that is literally how I felt through the ARL and throughout life because I didn't listen to him when really he and everybody else does his shit when they resort to cheating. And then they want to hit you in a moral after he just got caught cheating. That's why when it came down to a real fight, he got clobbered. Ha ha ha, my gang status in high school is everything. Ha ha ha, he literally lives through that, that keeps him content, but now it's the exact opposite, now the shit that he trained his whole life for isn't necessary, now anime is the regular, and he still has the audacity to think that it's still just my little brother, it's still just my little brother, it's just bitches, it's still one dimensional, it's still just my little brother, and that's the scary shit that I realized when I'm adult, I know that when you play dumb, you have a lot more connections in life, I know that it's quality over quality in this world, 100%, I'm like, it doesn't matter if he has a temp job. He has three smart people that will give him jobs. He has this and that. He has a lot to fall back on. I have to remain my control because he is allowed to act out and literally have a bunch of people that have his back. So literally, there was this one time where I called him out on literally people taking advantage of him because he has money and this and that. And he's like, oh, I'm going to let people take advantage of me. And I thought he was being stupid at the time. I'm like, dude, that's the gayest shit I've ever heard. But I'm like, now that I realize when you're older, how much the bare feet you have for playing dumb, that is why he's confident. He's so confident. He acts like a bitch now, but then he sets you up for a trap later. And I realized that is a thousand times more than you are. And you know, I have the mindset, it doesn't matter. When you have none to hide, it's always better than living on a house full of cards.